Good day to you and welcome to another Paddox video. I want to tell you about a conversation that I had with a new sectional owner the other day. This lady told me that she'd been in her newly completed Johannesburg townhouse for about six months. All the townhouses in the complex were quite small and they only had carports, she said, no garages. She explained that this put considerable pressure on her in terms of space so she had applied to the trustees, asking their permission to install a Wendy house in her garden area. The trustees had refused her application, and she was very upset about this. She wasn't sure whether or not her garden area was an exclusive use area, but she was absolutely sure that the trustees couldn't unreasonably refuse her permission to erect a Wendy house. And the way she understood this concept was that the trustees had to give her a reason, and one that she agreed was reasonable if they failed to give her the permission. I explained to her the distinction between a garden area that is unregulated common property and one that is subject to exclusive use rights, either registered or under Section 27A of the Act. And when I was reasonably sure from what she said, that she didn't have exclusive use rights to her garden, I suggested that she should work with other owners to promote a Section 27A rule that would create and confer those rights so she would have a basis upon which to make her request. She then said to me, so if I have the exclusive use rights, the trustees must let me put the Windy House up. And so I said, no, no, I explained that this, in this case, the trustees wouldn't be obliged to give her the permission, but they must then apply their minds to her request. And if it was reasonable in all the circumstances of the scheme, they should give the permission. But as part of their inquiry, I told her, they would have to be reasonably sure that she wasn't going to be using the Wendy House as if it was an addition to her section or an additional section altogether. I asked her what she thought she would use the Wendy House for. At the start, she mentioned the lack of garages, so I asked her, well, would you store things in it as if it were a garage? At this stage, she got a bit cagey, and she said, well, she wasn't sure how she would use it. So I explained that the trustees needed, for example, to know that she wasn't going to house a domestic servant in the Wendy house. At this stage, there was absolute dead silence from the lady. We then got on to what seems to me to be the nub of the issue that if you have exclusive use rights, the trustees can give you consent to put a building on that area, but the use of the building has to be in keeping with the type of exclusive use rights. So for example, a permitted structure in a garden area, exclusive use area, could only be used for gardening related activities, such as keeping tools and machinery or other things that one would normally expect to be used in a garden area, a bry perhaps. But not to extend the living area of the section. And so the trustees had, have to know what will be done. This lady needs to tell them what exactly she's going to use the area or the Wendy House for. And the trustees might very well impose appropriate conditions to ensure that this use is the case. Thank you for joining me in this Paddock's video.